Welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to talk about the sales cycle. Until now, we talked about the leads. Those will be people that's coming to your company for the first time. They were never been qualified. Those will be leads. Now, if you think about it, I said people, not clients or potentials. Sometimes you will use the lead system as a qualifying system, and those can be people that are customers, vendors, referrals, affiliates, employees, and so on. Whenever they go to the lead system, you will try to call them. If you call them, you try to qualify them. If they're being qualified, you push them to the contacts. Not qualified, they will die as leads. Whenever you have people in the contacts, you will like to have all the people in the contact. So it's one system that you will have all the people. Now, some people will ask, okay, so there is a problem here. How can it be that I will have my employees, my vendors, affiliates, everybody under one module? Because if I like to send a mailer only to my customers, how can I do that? Doesn't make sense. I like you to pause the video and think about the solution and see if you can manage to find a solution that under one module, you will have multiple people and you will have a way to differentiate between who is a, a, a customer, who is a, an employee, who is an affiliate and so on. So pause the video and let's proceed. So I hope that by now you thought about yourself, I hope anyway, and the solution is having another field that will be a contact type. So I will go and I will have a pick list and I will name it contact type. And here I will have, let's say, affiliate, customer, vendor, and so on. And whenever I am adding people, Let's make it one because I think I already have it in the system. So whenever I have a contact, I will need to select what is the contact type. And where is my contact? Okay, so the contact type, let's say it's a customer. Now, from the other side, if I like to filter them, I can create a new view. I can call it customers. And the contact type is customer. And then this view will show me only the customers. One more thing that you can do is you can create a filter of all the customers which we did all that in the previous lessons, obviously, so I'm running fast. And then you can save that as a filter and it will show you also how many people are in this view. So you'll have one for customers, one for vendors and so on. The reason that you want to have people only in leads and contacts and not in under other modules is because most of the extensions in the marketplace will talk to people only under leads and contacts. And if you're going to have more custom modules and those custom modules will not be part of the extensions and you will have very much limited functionality on how to work with them. Also, it's much simpler to deal with people in two buckets, leads and contacts versus multiple. So that's important. Next, we're going to talk about accounts. Account can be a basically a company, let's say Blue Web or uh, HP. And people work in those companies. So this is one approach. Another approach is the, the account. The account is a bucket. It's a bucket. For example, me and my spouse will be under an account, the Isaac family. So the Isaac family is a bucket, it's an account, and under that it will be me, my wife, my kids, and so on. So you can treat the account as a bucket for, let's say, family, for company, and for anything else that you want 
to be used as, as an aggregator. The opportunities, it's where the magic begins with the sales cycle. Whenever you are going into one of those opportunities or deals, you will have different stages. I prefer not to work like that with stages. I prefer to have it as a blueprint, which I will show you eventually. But just so you know, this is the default way that the system will work with the stages. There is something called pipelines that we are going to discover later on. But the idea is that you might have a different set of stages for different types of opportunities. Some opportunities will have, let's say, a buy process and you will have some stages and some of them will have a sell process. Some of them will sell consulting services and some of them will sell products. The stages will be completely different and a pipeline will differentiate between the two. In the opportunity, you will have the account name, you will have the person that is related to it and lots of details that you will need to have here. I like to touch on two different things that are very much unique to the opportunity module. One will be the contact roles. Those will be people that are related to the opportunity. So one by default is the person, the contact that is related to the deal, but you might have more. So let's say that Josh is the customer, but I will have one more that is the lawyer. And I also want to have the lawyer as part of the contact, ro contact roles. I can click on add contact roles, more contacts, and then I will select from my contacts. Let's say Adam is the guy that is the lawyer. So on the left side, I will select the contact and on the right side, I will select his role. So you can see that I don't have a lawyer. I have developer, decision maker, blah, blah, blah. I don't have lawyer and I do want to add a lawyer. I will go to setup. I will go to modules and fields and under opportunities, I will have the contact roles. From here, I can click on the plus button and I will add the lawyer. From here, I will refresh the page. I will go to more contacts. I will select Adam again. And now I will have the ability to add him as a lawyer. When I'm adding him as a lawyer, you will see now that I have here the contact. The contact will not have a role. And the other people that I'm adding, which can be multiple individuals, those will be lawyers. Some people will try to send information or do some automations on the contact roles. Most of the time you can do it with Deluge, with scripting language. And you can access all this information working with the contact roles directly from without code. It's relatively useless. And the majority of the usage is just to have a database of everybody that are related to this specific deal. Okay. So just so you know that it is possible to do more things with the contact roles. As an example, when a deal closed, I want an email to be sent to the lawyers or when a deal is in negotiation, it will go to the accountant and so on. So I can, I can do lots of stuff here, but use, using code, not without code. The second thing that I wanted to show you related the, the opportunity is the ability to control the stages. So if you go to the opportunities, you will have the stage probability mapping and that will do two things. One, I can, first of all, I can change and edit the existing stages. I can also add new stages by clicking on the plus button. And now I will add a new stage and you have something that's called probability. The probability, it means whenever I'm sending an estimate, 75% of the people will close the deal. 
So those will be the chances for conversion. If you will see here, the closed one is 100% because this is closed one, it's a done deal. The idea to have the probability is that later on, you can create forecasting of your business. And you can see that based on your pipeline, the people that are already in contact with you, you can see what are the chances to close those deals. And based on that, the system will calculate your estimated revenue whenever you're closing those deals. Beautiful. Whenever you are creating uh, new stages, you will also need to select a category. Open means it's in the pipeline. You're working on it. Close one means it's done deal. And when it's close lost, you lost it. Okay, so this is important. And all of them for now will be pipeline. So uh, ignore the rest. I don't want to complicate things. So those are the things that are related specifically to uh, the opportunities. Go back to the architecture that we talked about. You will need to have a proper architecture for your opportunities. It's important. Some people will have a process that lead is converted to an opportunity. They will need to book an appointment. From booking an appointment, they will need to create a proposal and then send the proposal. And all that can be automated with Zoho CRM. You will need a developer to do it uh, for you, or you can do it semi-manual, uh, uh, up to you. But you can do all those. Sending agreements can be done from the CRM automatically. Lots of stuff can be done, but you need to know what you want. You need to know what, is, what are your wildest dreams in terms of automating your business. The automation, not only reducing man hours, which is tons of money, it's also reducing mistakes, which I see it as the biggest thing in business. Whenever you have a mistake, you're sending the wrong proposal, the wrong product, the wrong pricing, people are upset and it's hurting your brand. So it's important that you're planning what you want your automations to be. And based on that, you will start to work and define your opportunities. Thank you for watching the lesson. If you'd like to know more about us, we are Amazing Business Results. We are a Zo Premium Partner and we offer a few services. One service will be Custom Zo Development. That means that you're coming with your own business problems and we'll find the right Zo solutions for your needs. We also develop extensions. Those extensions will be applications that we created that are plug and play to your Zo system. And each one of, of those extensions will solve a specific business problems for your needs. We are also a Ring Central reseller, which means we can sell you the Ring Central system, which is a phone and text message system. And because you're buying it from us, we'll give you the license to use our extension for free for one year.